This is the Understanding Run Fit series, and today it's time to dive into D-line play. We're not going to get a second chance in the game. Now, as you start to study run fits, if you're, you're ready to start playing defense at a higher level or understanding how defense is played uh, on TV, this is how D linemen play. There's going to be a few things in here that you're going to, you're going to look at it first and go, wait, really? What if, what if they, what if they, again, like I said, once you start to study run fits, you're going to spend a lot of time pen to paper going, what if they? Uh, but this, without a doubt, is how defensive linemen are taught by default by any college or professional team. And in fact, most high school teams are going to be teaching their defensive line to play like this. So if I want to start defending at a higher level, I have to teach my defensive linemen how to read blocks. So rather than having my defensive line with their eyes in the backfield, I really need my defensive line looking at their offensive lineman, the guy across from them. How is that guy trying to block me? Because that's gonna tell me how I need to react and where I need to go. When I have a good amount of defenders reacting to blocks versus just reacting to what's happening in the backfield, I have a better chance of giving up less big plays. And at the end of the day, I need to make sure that the offense I'm facing has to earn their points. I need to make sure that they've got to put a 15 play drive together to score rather than just giving up one big play. They ran one play, gained 80 yards, and it's a touchdown. So giving up less big plays certainly starts up front. As a defensive lineman, I got to understand there are five basic things an offensive lineman can do. He can base block me. He can down block or skip me. He could reach, he could pull, or he could pass block. Now when I get here on the whiteboard, you'll see that the outside half of this offensive man is colored in. Now that's a great way to indicate that my defender is lined up to his outside shade. He is shaded to the outside of that man. In fact, lo and behold, that's the term people use. They say he's in a shade. <laughs> most football players, most football coaches would call this a five technique. So he's right here outside shade of that offensive tackle and he is reading that offensive tackle. When he comes off the ball, he wants to come off as hard as he can and he wants to get hands on this guy's outside shoulder. We're going to say outside shoulder by default. Most coaches are going to teach exactly where the hands go slightly different. But for the most part, what we want to attack his outside half and defer. Just for easy teaching sake, we're going to say he's going to attack that outside shoulder. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the blocks that we could see and how we need to react to those blocks. First and foremost, the most basic is a base block. Now you might be surprised to know that the base block is really not the most common thing you're going to see as a defensive end. You'll see some of the others more often than you'll see a base block, but you absolutely will likely get base block during a game. When he just, the man in front of me tries to block me and he's trying to push me as hard as he can away from the ball. Well, my reaction to a base block needs to be squeeze. Base, squeeze. I need to try to push back into him as hard as I can, not lose ground. I would love to gain ground if I can, but I gotta take him with me if I'm gaining ground. And I need to make sure that my head stays to the outside because that is my gap responsible by default, right? We talked about in the last video, I'm by default, I'm a C gap defender. I gotta keep my head in that spot. One problem you'll see is that a kid that can get nosy too soon, he gets nosy, he wants to, he sees something, maybe action going away or action going inside of him and he reacts too soon and dips his head inside. Next thing you know, the ball carrier bounces outside because he got nosy and did not maintain his gap responsible. So he's got to keep his gap integrity, as they say, and he's got to keep his head to the outside. And I want to try to constrict this hole as much as I can. So my reaction to a base block is squeeze, push it back. The second thing that I could get, which is maybe the most common, is a down block. So I'm going to get skipped in some way, shape or form. This offensive tackle might be down blocking to my teammate or he might be trying to get to a linebacker. Either way, he's skipping me. Well, as we said, I am trying to get my hands on him, so hopefully I do. We don't want him to get a free shot on my teammates. I'd like to influence him, right? Maybe kind of have him off balance because I've hit him so hard on the shoulder. 
and I recognize that I'm getting skipped. So that's a down. My response to a down block needs to be trap. Now that's just kind of a short shortcut term that we use, but I need to be looking for a trapper. And a trapper is a blocker coming either from the backfield or from the other side of the formation, but make no mistake, someone is coming to kick me out. And I have two lines there, it's gonna be one or the other, but one of those guys, someone, when I get skipped, they didn't just forget about me. Someone is coming to kick me out. So my response to down needs to be trap. I'm gonna come and scrape straight down that line. Hands on, he's skipping me, it should turn my shoulders and now I'm looking straight down the line. I gotta keep my eyes out of the backfield and I have to dip my outside arm underneath that kick out and make contact and pry up through. So I would love to dip, we say dip, rip, pry, dip, rip, and then I could pry to get vertical after I have spilled the trap. That's the term they use, spilled the trap. Made that trap block go outside. If that sounds complicated at all, wait till you start coaching it and realize that teaching people to spill a trapper, to react to a down block by getting scraping straight down the line and prying up through is one of the hardest things to do in coaching. It'll take you every bit of a month, two months of practice, maybe a full two years of coaching the same kid to get that kid to begin to react to down blocks by spilling trappers which is why not all football teams are good at football. It's why some teams are better than others consistently. The consistent set of coaches that's following a consistent set of rules and been teaching kids consistently over the course of years. And that's why they're very difficult to beat. When you get a defender that reacts to a down block by spilling the trap, you've got a team that's going to be difficult to move the ball on. The next thing an offensive lineman could do is he could try to reach me. Now, reach block means that he's trying to get outside of me. He's trying to get around me. He wants to get to my outside shoulder to allow his teammates to attack the outside. Well, my reaction as a defense, as a defender, my reaction to a reach block needs to be to not get reached. We used to say push pull. I'm trying to get my hands on. As I said, that's always the first thing. And I need to push with my outside hand and pull with my inside hand and keep my head to the outside and fight against that reach. So whatever terminology you want to use with your players, the bottom line is my reaction to getting reached needs to be to not get reached. I need to fight that and I'll fight it as far as I have to run to make sure that this guy is not reaching me. I've got to fight it. I, I cannot settle. And that's what you want to guard against as a coach is your kid looking at this, seeing space and going, you know what? That it'd be way easier if I just dipped inside. And you're right, it would be easier for you. As a defender, it would be easier for you. But I promise you it is not better for your team for you to go underneath the reach block. So he could try to reach me and I need to fight that reach. The third thing a guy could do is he could pull, which means he's gonna run away from me. He's pulling to the other side of the formation. Now this one is the most counterintuitive and hardest for a new coach to get used to that this is actually how it's played, but my reaction to pull needs to be follow. So when he starts running away to the other side of the formation, as I said, I'm trying to get my hands on him. I'm gonna attack hands on him and I need to be running with him. I should be right in his hip pocket and he will take me to the ball. I chase him straight across that line of scrimmage. What do I want to avoid is just chasing into the backfield. Now, before you get too uncomfortable with the idea of this defender just chasing a puller the other way, keep in mind, this defensive end does have other people behind him, right? And the whole defense works together. We use that word puzzle. There's pieces to this puzzle and it all comes together. Any one piece by itself, no, is not good but the pieces together make for a very stingy defense. So my reaction to pull is follow. The last thing an offensive lineman could do is retreat. He'll actually back up. Do you know what that means? That's right, it means pass. They back up in pass protection. So when he backs up, 
I now know that it's pass, and now, and only now, I get to turn on the Jets and put on my pass moves. Now, whatever pass moves as a coach you've given your kid permission to do, a lot of coaches will say, I need you to stay on that outside and just rush, right? You'll just speed rush to the outside. Maybe you're a coach and in your system, you're gonna allow that kid to bull rush as well. Maybe if he gets to a certain point, you're gonna allow him, he could spin back underneath. That's up to you as a coach. I, that's where you spend time, pen to paper, saying what can we get away with schematically allowing him to do when he sees pass. So that last piece of the puzzle, the last thing that offensive lineman could do is retreat. And when he does, that means pass, you are free to pass rush. So did I lose you? Those are your reactions to the five basic things an offensive lineman can do. He base blocks, I squeeze. He down blocks, I spill the trap. If he reaches me, I have to not get reached. When he pulls away, I need to follow. And when he retreats from me, it's past, I can rush. I hope you enjoy this. Stay tuned as we start to put the pieces together. We'll talk linebackers next, and then we'll put everything together and start drawing up. If you, for lack of a better term, just get up, break out the napkin and start drawing up plays and show you how our run fits will work and will make us a very stingy defense. If you haven't done so already, be sure to like and subscribe. We really appreciate your support. If you haven't checked it out yet, click on join. You can see some of the options to support us further and all the perks and bonus footage and bonus clinics that you'll have access to if you want to check that out.